So hello, this video is all about connective tissue histology. Um, I will be going over the slides um, and the tissue types that I require my students to know for my anatomy course. So the first one I wanted to start off with is um, a dense connective tissue, specifically dense regular connective tissue. And we can find dense regular connective tissue in the tendons. Um, now its function is to provide attachment, reduce friction between bones, as well as stabilize the bones. Now, when you see this pink, one of the things I think of is, okay, if my child were to finger paint one of my older children, and they dip their hand in pink paint and they just made streaks across the canvas. This is what it would look like in little random purple dots. All of the pink that you're seeing, that is collagen fibers. So when you see thick pink lines, those are collagen fibers. So think like collagen for your lips or if you're putting pink lipstick on, right? That's how I remember it. And then all of these purple dots are actually fibroblasts, which are immature fiber cells, just to um, ensure maintenance of this dense, regular connective tissue. And it's regular because it is highly aligned. This is another image of dense, regular connective tissue. So again, you can see the collagen fiber is a little wavy, wavy but it is thick and um, we see these fibroblasts here. Now dense regular connective tissue is often confused with smooth muscle. So go ahead and click on that muscle um, histology video after this to ensure that you don't mix up the two. This image right here actually is to indicate um, dense irregular connective tissue. So for me it's kind of like um, the painting Starry Night. Um, but in pink. <laughs> it's just a bunch of swirls all over the place. Um, so dense irregular connective tissue is found in the dermis of the skin or in that second layer of the skin. The first layer or the epidermis is actually um, this purple right here. And from the previous video you watched, if you haven't watched it already, there's a video on epithelial tissue. Um, this is actually that stratified squamous keratinized. So underneath that is where we can find that dense irregular connective tissue. So we see the pink, so we know that that is, again, collagen fibers. And every now and then you'll see a very um, thick pink line, and that would indicate a collagen fiber bundle. But it basically, if you see a hot mess of finger painting pink all over the place, then you're looking at dense irregular. Going back, if it looks highly aligned, then this is dense regular, okay? So regular has some structure to it. Irregular is a hot, like two-year-old finger painting mess. <laughs> okay. Now going into loose connective tissue, one of the loose connective tissues that we have are areolar tissue. And I like to think areolar tissue is airy. We can find it in the lungs, we can find it in the dermis of the skin as well. Now a few things that we can see here um, are the collagen fibers. So here it looks more of a purplish color. Um, but nevertheless, you see these large, thick strokes going across, and that would indicate collagen fibers. Whereas if you follow my little pointer right here, you see this very thin, almost pencil line. The thin lines indicate elastic fibers. So we have elastic fibers, which are thin, and they look like pencils. And then we have collagen fibers, which are thicker, and they look more like um, if you were to use like a highlighter or a marker, something that is wider. Um, now, the function of areolar tissue is to cushion organs as well as provide support. So this is another image right here. So again, you can see these thin lines here, which would indicate the elastic fibers. And then in the background, more of these pink um, lines, which would be those collagen fibers. So again, this is areolar tissue. 
The next one we have is reticular connective tissue. And reticular connective tissue um, is located in the liver, in the spleen, and in the kidney. And these are places that you'll remember because the function of reticular connective tissue is to give supporting framework. So the shape of the liver, the shape of the kidney, the shape of the spleen, why a liver will look like a liver from a human to a dog to a cat to a gerbil <laughs> is because of the shape. And the shape is provided, again, by the reticular connective tissue. Now, to me, um, it looks like one of two things. It looks like a cherry blossom tree um, where these are the branches and you see the little cherry blossoms. And these little branches or these lines um, are reticular fibers. Now, another thing that I see when I look at this is a cracked phone, like a cracked iPhone or Android, okay? Let's not start that war, but your phone gets cracked, and all the little cracks, okay, are the reticular fibers, and that should be easy to remember. Reticular fibers, reticular connective tissue. Here we have another image of the reticular connective tissue. So again, you can see all the little cracks and those are the reticular fibers. Um, and this probably looks more like that cracked iPhone than the previous one did, right? This little section right here. So if you see some cracks, then you're looking at reticular connective tissue because those fibers are what gives the shapes to things like liver and spleen and kidney. Now the next one we have, oh so delicious, it's fat. It is adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is fat. You just have a bunch of fat cells, okay? Um, and I love fat because I love donuts and donuts are essentially nothing but fat. Um, so the location of adipose tissue is actually under the skin um, in that hypodermis or that subcutaneous layer. And we also find it surrounding our organs. Now the purpose for fat, right? Fat is important. I want you to remember that. Uh, its function is insulation. So to keep us nice and warm, it stores energy. So these lipid reservoirs, and it provides padding and cushions the shock. So each one of these little, to me, they look like little popped bubbles, right? Like a bunch of bubbles in a bubble bath. Each one of these little popped bubbles is a fat cell, one adipocyte, a mature fat cell. And then if we look at this one, right, mature fat cell, and then off in the corner, you'll see the nucleus, but it is mostly a lipid droplet. So adipose is super easy to recognize. If you see a bunch of bubbles, you're looking at fat, okay? Adipose tissue. Now the next one that I want to talk to you about is going to be cartilage. Now cartilage is another fun one because it has a very distinct shape of cell. And to me, they look like these little bubble buddies. Um, I don't know what age group you're in, but I loved SpongeBob as a kid and I love it as an adult. Don't judge me. <laughs> and there is an episode about a bubble buddy. And to me, all these little things look like little bubble babies <laughs> or little bubble buddies. They have this very distinct shape. So when you see the shape, what you're actually looking at are chondrocytes. Chondro for cartilage, sites because it is mature. So these are mature cartilage cells and we always find them in cartilage tissue. So the image that we're looking at right now is hyaline cartilage. And hyaline cartilage is located in our respiratory pathways, at the ends of our bones, as well as in our coastal cartilage. Now its function is to give stiff but flexible support and reduce friction between those bony surfaces. Now some of the things that you can actually see would be um, the background, which is the matrix. The matrix is just all the nutrients, proteins, and factors that tell the cells that, you know, hey, you are a cartilage cell, this is how you should behave. 
Um, and then what you also have is, so if we're looking at this one right here, it's almost like this little halo that goes around or embodies and groups the cells. And that is called a lacunae. So a lacunae is a structure or a home in which these chondrocytes live. Now, the next one I want to show you is elastic cartilage. So again, you should instantly see these chondrocytes, those little bubble buddies, and you think to yourself, hey, that's cartilage. Good job. Your next question should be, which cartilage is it? Well, this is elastic because we have elastic fibers. If you remember earlier on, elastic fibers are those thin, dark lines. And this is why elastic cartilage stains so dark because of all of the elastic fibers. To me, it looks like a very um, saturated tattoo. You know when you go and you get a tattoo and it's nice and fresh and bright and vibrant <laughs> and then it fades. This looks like a very fresh tattoo elastic cartilage when you're comparing it to hyaline cartilage, much lighter. So for elastic cartilage, we can find it in the epiglottis. That's the thing that opens and closes to ensure that you don't um, have an apple go down your trachea when you swallow. Um, and we also find it in our external ear. So think about if you've ever gotten a cartilage piercing, that was in your elastic cartilage. Now its function is to tolerate distortion without damage. So think about it. You are able to move your ear around, but it should not get damaged. So again, these cells are going to be called chondrocytes. They're mature cartilage cells. And then all of the dark lines that you see. So if we zoom in right here, all of this, and you can see these little ticks, all of this is elastic fibers surrounding those chondrocytes. And again, you still see that little halo, but it's a darker one. And that is that lacunae surrounding these chondrocytes. Now, the next one that we have is actually that fibrous cartilage. And fibrous cartilage is a the third and final type of cartilage that I have my students identify in my anatomy course. So the first thing you should have seen, again, the little chondrocytes, right? Look at these bubble buddies. But you have collagen fiber behind, okay? Now you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, it's not pink though. It's okay, sometimes it stains pink, sometimes it stains blue. One of the things to note with cartilage is they're gonna be these very rich, vibrant colors, these pinks, blues, purples, and the shapes are very distinct. Now the location of fibrous cartilage is in the inner vertebral discs or in the meniscus of the knee. Its function is to resist compression, and limit relative movement. Now, for me, I can tell that it's fibrous cartilage because the background, the matrix, if you will, it looks very grainy um, compared to the other cartilage. So the elastic cartilage was very dark black, dark purple. Um, it had lots of lines because of those elastic fibers. The hyaline cartilage was a very soft pink, a soft purple, okay? There wasn't a lot of texture to the matrix. But if you look here, it just looks grainy, almost as if it's um, been scratched or tattered, right? The little tattered ends of like a shirt that's been worn way too long. Um, but again, you still have those chondrocytes in lacunae. So this is fibrous cartilage. Now the next one, the next type of connective tissue we have is a liquid connective tissue. This is blood. Blood is located in the cardiovascular system and its purpose is to destroy pathogens and repair injury if we're talking about those white blood cells which are stained here in purple. Um, or to oxygenate the body if we talk about the red blood cells which are all these other little um, circles that we see here. These are red blood cells. Now you'll notice that they look a little clear in the center and that's because red blood cells do not have a nucleus. Um, so it is empty. So that's that little donut shape or that little divot that we see, that concave shape. 
Um, and things that are staining purple, those are the white blood cells. And then all of this clear background we see here, I'm a painter, so I think like the canvas, that would be the plasma. So the next and last tissue that we have is actually bone tissue. And bone tissue is a solid um, type of connective tissue. It's located in the skeletal system, and its function is to provide movement, stability, and posture. Um, it also provides visceral protection. So first thing, check your posture. How's your posture? Is your bone... Uh, it, are the bones in your back helping you right now? Um, and then visceral protection, it protects all of the organs that are inside of your body. Now, when I'm looking at bone histology, to me, it looks like a bunch of tree stumps. And the center of the tree stump, we call that the central canal. And all of the little dots that are in the rings of this quote unquote tree stump are osteocytes. Osteo for bone, site for mature. So they are mature bone cells. So if you look and you see a bunch of tree stumps, you know you're looking at bum 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 bones, okay? Um, and that's it for this video of connective tissue. Feel free to move on to the next video or review this as many times as you need.